very important round with currently Saskatchewan leading and in first place with a record of seven and two. Manitoba, Canada, Nova Scotia right behind with only three losses. And those four rinks right now have to be considered the favorites to advance to the playoffs. Then we have New Brunswick, British Columbia, and Quebec all at four losses and hoping that any of those front rinks will fall. We want to update you now on some of the games, and this one is between Manitoba and Quebec, and the final stone of the Manitoba skip, Chris Moore from Fort Rouge. You know, Chris makes a valiant attempt at a chip and a roll here. They played a tremendous first end, Vic. You can see it, it stays out and now comes at the very end. All she wants to do is touch the corner of that stone and try and chip the front one in and also roll the shooter in for three, but no good attempt, two points. So Manitoba, with a record of seven and three, takes the two-nothing lead on Agnes Charette from the Buckingham Curling Club, coming in with a record of five and four. Very big game is British Columbia and Saskatchewan. Final stone of Julie Sutton, Pat Sanders throwing. Pat was playing a come around game and just kicked off the guard or she had an opportunity for three. And so it was a steal of one for Saskatchewan and Michelle Schneider. And of course, Saskatchewan with first place, a record of 7-2, British Columbia 5-4. And, and we pick up this game live now as they play in the second end. Dick, I think Linda and I would like to talk a little bit with the first end just for a moment before we get into this. Michelle Schneider did it again, Linda. She was looking at three with her last shot. She didn't have last rock. She played a tremendous hit and roll in behind right. the guard. And as we saw, Pat Sanders just kick the guard on the way by an attempt to score three points. Great shot by Michelle Schneider again. It was. And there you see Julie yeah, Sutton, who is listed, of course, as the skip, was the skip when this tournament began, but because of some problems, she just maybe couldn't handle the pressure. Who knows? Uh, they have made the switch. BC struggled there, a little bit. Tight, and please. so Pat yeah. Sanders, the former women's world champion, is now skipping. Yeah. Julie Sutton is throwing second stone. Julie had a couple of bad games, and she wanted to take a different position. Pat Sanders, of course, is a world champion at the skip position. We saw it right off in the first end, a very aggressive play by BC. I think that's going to continue. They're coming around guards again yep. this end. And this one will slip right through the ring. So the bad shot by Julie Sutton with her second stone. An update for you on the game between Ontario and Nova Scotia, Ontario with the hammer. This is the final stone for Jill Greenwood. Humber Highland Curling Club. Yellowstone, top of the forefoot. That belongs to Colleen Jones. The hit, it'll spill out. Count two for Ontario as they try and play spoiler here, leading 2-0 over Nova Scotia, who come in with a record of 6-3. And, and Nova Scotia facing one of those teams, Ray, that's very out of the playoffs. The Ontario team is not a bad team. They had to come through some very big teams in their provincial playdowns, but uh, today they're relaxed and playing well. That's always a tough situation, too, then, then you know, when you're playing against a team that really doesn't have anything to lose, and, and they're proud, and they want to, uh, you know, go home with a good record. So, it, as Colin mentioned in our show last night, you know, it's, it's tougher than to play those teams than to play it's someone that's, you know, eh? in the position to maybe qualify. Joan Stricker, the Saskatchewan path of Julie Sutton, and she couldn't hold the draw as well as it slipped out the back. Lots of rocks in play. That stone okay, just biting the top of the 12 belongs to BC. And we can get it I think that's an that. indication of how great the ice is. It's very clean right from the first rock. They did practice it on it before. Discussing the weight here, and it is nice and clean, especially down the center area. With the shuffle of the BC lineup, Georgina Hawk second throughout the week. Another member of that Pat Sanders rink that won the world championship. Good on. look at Georgie's delivery. It's a good chance for BC now to tuck another Sony behind those long guards. The center is very slippy, but when you get across the center line, it starts to curl. It's a little light. It doesn't have the weight. one of those interesting ends where it's more and more difficult to get the rock into the ring. There is a port way. down the center line. I think Michelle's going to have to go to the intern maybe now. No, she's staying with the outturn. So there's obviously okay. she feels there's a big enough hole there. 
you have to wait for the rock, Linda. When you get it out a little bit on the frost line, and it seems the further you go out, the more it comes. It starts to come, and as it comes out of the frost into the center of the ice, it really moves across. The second stone for the Saskatchewan yep, third. This is Joan Stricker. We're in the second end of this 14th round of the Tournament of Hearts, Saskatchewan, leading BC 1-0. Here's a good look at the frost line. I'm curious to see how it builds up on the edges. And she did get out into the cross, and not only did it not curl yet, but it was heavier, and she comes up quite light. Well, that's not bad. Do you think we can get by this one? too much of a string on that one. I'll just see you more. Well, I probably would have needed more. She'll try and come down this way here, Linda. Maybe catch that one, rolling the shooter this way and pushing this stone that way. Don't catch the, the corner of it, uh, then and, and slip around it, that's fine too. If she wants to negotiate to get through that like, hole. I don't think we can go that way again. I don't think we can get by that yellow one. I don't think we can get by both of them. Like, I think she's right. Okay. Yeah, it does. Try this way. They have, because of the uh, if you did that, stone. it's the only way to get in there is with the split. The split. This is good though. And what Julie's saying is you play split weight, you can probably get through the hole at the outturn, but they decided yeah. to go to the intern and come the other way. A straight draw to the top of the forefoot. Intern draw. And the second stone yeah. for Georgina Hawk. Yeah. She's down a fairly good path. It's going to be difficult to all the weight here. Georgina, that's kind of the first intern we've seen down there, so it's a little bit of a guess on the weight. It was a new path, and now Michelle is well, looking at a very so difficult it. situation to get one of those Yellowstone things. Yeah. Well, we haven't played down that far that much. We've been playing all down that way. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if that's what we're trying at, and there's no point in trying to come around. And on the outside. Yeah, I'd say try that. You don't have a whole lot of that, but no, let's bump that one straight back. Really what they're kind of right looking here. at is maybe this here, the angle may be there, Linda, to move that stone this way. Even if you catch the corner, you could do it a couple of ways, yeah, pushing that. here. Try that. A good choice because okay. there is a few spots on that front rock that you could hit and still make the raise at the right angle. The other rock is there as well. Maybe a more difficult raise. Illustrate one more time. Well, they've crossed about a little bit. Now they've gone to the wide intern, I think. It looks like they're going to try and come around this way here, getting it in this way here. Well, we saw Joan Stricker try the other side of the ice, and it bogged down, barely made it over the uh, hog line. Interesting to see what she does now. She tries to hit the race. Yeah, it's heavy out here, too, though. Well, she does know that it's heavier, and she has had tremendous control of her draw weight in the past game. With this, bump. Side, they call a different one. Well, you know, it's uh, one of those situations. What I was kind of talking about or thinking about is yeah. you could play almost uh, hitting weight on those two rocks that are frozen out in front, the two yellow stones, and it would come in off of uh, one of the red stones and maybe remove the stone that's biting the one in the top of the 12 foot and hit the angles there. Left As we're looking at it, hitting the two stones that are frozen together, and if the angle's right, it might kick the red one and come back onto the stone that's just biting the ring. This is the first stone for the Saskatchewan skip. Michelle Schneider here in the second end. It's kind of a, it would be a kind of a Pat Ryan shot. Love those angles. Easy. Okay. And 
She grabs a piece of the eight foot. The unfortunate part with that shot is she's left it exposed and Cap Sanders can hit and roll off that rock and be behind all those rocks. I just running out here. Not much you can do with all those stones in front, and really they can't bump one of those up either. They don't have one of their shot to do that, can they? So the angles are bad. There's yeah, no way of getting it. But this is, as, as Linda mentioned, this is a good opportunity because she hits this and gets a little roll to the inside to the set towards the center line. She sets up a good possibility of scoring three points. Pat Sanders, the BC skip and her first stone. together so it's not uh, new to them. Yeah. World champion. Michelle Schneider settles in. This will be her second stone. BC with the hammer here in the second end. Trailing one nothing. Final stone for Saskatchewan and they're going to try that draw again. The right weight the first time. I think they've adjusted the broom a little bit, hoping it will curl a bit more. Yes, the third shot down here now. but the opportunity again for a hit and stick and possibly two here for BC in the second end. Michelle got a little unlucky, even if that hadn't rolled in quite so far. If Pat Sanders had no hit it with the shot we're about to see, she'd only score the one point, but it just rolled in too far and it's wide open. Yeah. That takes away. from the Buckingham Club. This is the final stone of the second end. You can see the yellow stone. Four foot, she's trying to get the raise in for two, and she won't get it there. One for Quebec, and so after two complete, it's Manitoba two, Quebec one. We'll have more from Kelowna and this 1989. Scott, turn it apart in just a minute. The symbol of excellence, Rolls Royce. And of all the magnificent automobiles bearing this crest, there is one single classic that surpasses all others, the legendary Silver Ghost. Now recreated by Franklin Mint Precision Models in a collector's piece so exceptional, it's the official model authorized by Rolls Royce Motor Cars. The Silver Ghost, only one was ever built. The 1907 masterpiece that established Rolls Royce as the master car builder. It passed every endurance test of its time and still runs perfectly today. The priceless flagship of the Rolls-Royce line, now in a stunning die-cast model with protectively coated silver-plated trim. And assembled for more than 127 pieces. Each feature is authenticated by Rolls-Royce motor cars, like the removable spare timer, 
sterling silver plated trim, exactly like the original. Tiny instruments, pedals, and controls. Engine detailing precise to the last spark plug. You can almost hear the ghost-like hum of its motor. Details to satisfy the most demanding car enthusiast and sophisticated collector. A showpiece for home or office. To order, call 1-800-543-1012. Use your credit card or mail 3625 by check or money order to the Franklin Mint. We will rebuild the balance in three monthly payments of 3625 each. With your model comes the history and certificate of authenticity signed by Rolls-Royce Motor Cars. The imported Silver Ghost is available only from Franklin Mint Precision Models with the die-cast metal craftsmanship of models costing thousands of dollars. Now only four payments of $36.25 each. Call 1-800-543-1012. The Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost, a most incredible model of the world's most incredible car. There's nothing quite like owning a Rolls-Royce. Let's get you caught up now on all the scores in this 14th round of Scott Tournament of Hearts. Prince Edward Island with a 1-0 lead over Debbie Shermack from Edmonton. And it's British Columbia with that 2 in the second to lead Saskatchewan in a very big game, 2-1. Ontario still leading 2-0 over Nova Scotia. They blanked the second end. Manitoba 2-1 over Quebec after Agnes Chaudet picked up one. And Newfoundland with a steal of one. Leading the defending champions, Heather Houston 1-0. They blanked the second end. As we return to our game between British Columbia and Saskatchewan. This is the second stone for the Saskatchewan lead. Leanne Everly with one guard in front and she may have come up just a little light here. The guard in front is a DC stone and Melissa Saligo was a little wide and a little light. It was supposed to come into the center of the house and actually benefited Saskatchewan in the corner guard. The weight indication. She asked Julie how much she could see of it. About half. Julie Sutton with her first stone makes the take out and the shooter will roll as well. It was a good shot, leaving Saskatchewan, though, the opportuni opportunity to try and come around it again. Well, the first two ends are any indication, Linda, we're going to see lots of rocks in place. That's right. Both teams have been coming around guards, regardless of their position on the sheet. You never stop at the end of, uh, you know, getting close to the, the, the tiebreakers or the, or the playoffs. And, uh, all the years I've watched and, and played this game, I never stop getting excited at this point. You know, you never know what's going to happen. we see that you know that one team playing the other team so it's uh, yeah. determines itself sort of strange this year laurie keller's first stone flips into the four foot yeah. this is julie sutton and her second stone the bc second second stone.
Uh, see, it's funny. You don't mind sweeping. It even brings the smile to your face when you make a shot like that. That's hard work. That's hard work no matter where you come from. But it turns out nicely, though, Vic, you're right. You feel good about it. Yeah. Even though you're blocking now. You see my face has color. <laughs> Three of the girls standing under the good line of Saskatchewan side. They feel good about getting that one by. Pat's really playing the only thing she's got, so that's uh, to go around with herself. The option would be to play <laughs> off the guard and maybe give up a few points this time. But Pat's a very aggressive skip. She will go right around these kinds of shots. Try and run the front and back, yeah, you're referring to. Or at least take off the guard and open it up a bit. The VC third, this is Georgina Hawks, and her first stone in the third end. VC leading 2 1 over Saskatchewan. Saw that curl has made the game very exciting. The tap backs are possible even when the rock is fully buried. That one came over just a bit too much. It's probably the easiest place to peel a rock off on either end. And that's, uh, for example, the, you know, the extra end uh, last night, the Chris Moore, uh, Shell Snyder game. Was, uh, the catcher girls just had a little trouble keeping the front clean, a couple of nose hits, and it's not that easy to split on this side. So it does make it very interesting. It's a little hard to anticipate the sweeping. Hard not to look at the makes the hit and gets the outside roll and sits top 12. The rocks are nicely spread out, but they think they can get a bit of a roll. Behind the guard. Take away. Georgina Hawk, second stone. All those weights are predetermined in practice sessions and games you play through the season. Normal. Oh. 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 Might have gotten that one a little wide and it ran down center for so long it didn't have a chance to come over. Thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> that spot is tempting. She yeah. could come around both those okay. rocks again. Decided to draw to the open side. She's satisfied with her two points. What Lynn is referring to, Vic, is that, you know, she could suck in around that long guard again with two stones. Really put the pressure on Pat Easy. Sanders. Easy. Joan Stricker and her second stone. I would think, though, the problem yeah, is if you sure. don't make that properly and you leave yourself short, oh, then you leave the door open for somebody else. Or you're right, if you don't make it properly, you could set up a lot of, a lot of yep, 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 heat and sit on top of it. This way, you, you know, all you can do is exchange stones and you'll get your two points. John Stricker into the top of the 12. That was a good shot. That draw looked easy, but we are still moving to the side, and that was great weight by Joan. They only took there for the draw. And Jonah times this week, Linda has struggled a little bit with her draw weight. With her draw weight, actually, <laughs> and her takeout weight on the side where it's so cross. Yeah, the other one's down, the other side, 13. Michelle Schneider on the left, her third, Joan Stricker. Right now alone in first place with a record of 7-2. and two. <laughs> Moving the broom over, I think, mostly because she's deciding on a different takeout weight. Here in the third, first from BC. Gets a little inside roll, but not enough. Well, that was Georgie's uh, call to make, and she kept the girls off it all the way down. This is her tough decision to make. Uh, she kind of had to anticipate the movement, and it stayed out for a while. Then it did make a big movement. And 
I mean, I thought I had no normal weight. I've been feeling it. George hasn't been playing third all week. We have to give her that, too. She's just playing the third position now and hasn't seen the rocks all week come down. I think maybe, though, she shouldn't have been saying right off. If the sweepers were close, maybe they would have had a chance to jump on it faster. But it comes so hard off the center line. It is hard to match it. House cleaning. See those leads in seconds? They have that rock right up in position. That's part of the job description as well, Vic. <laughs> Clean the ice, put the rocks up, carry the brushes. What I was upset at the odd game, I would always I'd put the stones up the wrong color. <laughs> Joe Schneider. And this is her first stone. Yes! Jumped onto the other turn. She wants to sit just about there and roll it to the outside. <laughs> We've watched this team uh, you know, a number of games now, and I can't believe her percentages are low because I, she just yeah. takes everything. She looks so surprised. Uh, precise. She played that. Want to throw your normal? Just good controlled takeout weight on that straighter turn. Well, you made uh, you know, a good comment, Linda. For example, when you talk percentages, uh, Michelle's last stone last night, she had to draw what? to the spot to try and win the game. It may not have even been possible because it ran so straight. The outturn she had to play ran so straight. She had to bite part of the button, and she missed it by <laughs> about three inches or four inches. And on the score sheet, the percentage sheet, that's a zero. Okay. You know, so it's, they're misleading in many, yeah, many cases. Around. I always said that as a kid. Yes, I know. Very <laughs> misleading to see that I'm only throwing 30%. Pat Sanders settles in. This will be the final stone for British Columbia here in the third. Saskatchewan has the hammer. Terrific call by Georgie Hawks in that shot. I mean, that's the first time she, she didn't anticipate it, and she called that one perfectly, Linda. And that's why the roll. Pat threw the weight that they had talked about, and then Georgina Hawks called the line, and the result. Michelle doesn't have any decision here. She's just got the draw. Trying to find out the weight here. Again, it's a little bit of a new path. They played some takeouts down here, but we haven't seen many draws. Shot like that sure sp spoils the idea of a two. There's more than spoil it. That's one has taken all the opportunities they've had before this game to get their two. Everything went right yep, for yep. them, but that was a great roll. Three guys, three. Now Michelle Schneider with the final three, stone of this. Third end needs a piece of the four. Oh uh, yeah. In these her two pocket. ladies, in her pocket. Yeah, the these play. two ladies know how to shoot. Picks up one, and so we're tied 2-2 after three ends here in Kelowna. An update for you: the game between Manitoba and Quebec. They're playing the third 2-1 Manitoba final stone. Chris Moore, Fort Rouge Curling Club in Winnipeg. A couple of yellow Quebec stones around the 12 foot. Look at this to try to draw it in. Front end working hard. They'll get it there for one. And now it's Manitoba three and Quebec one as they go to the fourth. We'll have more from Kelowna and this 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts here on TSN. I don't feel good. No, heartburn. Oh, my stomach's up. Oh, I can't. It hurts. I feel burning. Oh, here we are. Pepto-Bismol. Pepto-Bismol is proven stomach medicine. Its effective formula coats your stomach and starts to work right away. This special coating formula puts soothing medication between you and the upset to bring you relief. 
Give your stomach trouble. Good. Uh, Pepto-Bismol. Mom, I'm sick. Oh, dear, you come right along and we'll do something special to help you breathe easier. <laughs> Vicks has a special way to look after you no matter what kind of cold caught you. Like Vicks Vapor Rub. We'll put Vapor Rub's special medicated vapor to work on that stuffy head. <sighs> and you'll soon feel much, much better. Okay. It's good to know that someone cares. Because someone does. Vicks Soothing Cold Relief. We're gonna make some changes to our lifestyle. Gonna walk some more. Gonna laugh some more. Gonna eat a whole new lifestyle. McCain invites you to change your old lifestyle into a whole new lifestyle with the McCain menu plan of light to light dinners. Delicious meals at less than 300 calories each. Gonna walk some more. Yeah. Gonna laugh some more. Gonna eat a whole new lifestyle. McCain light to light, a whole new lifestyle. The action is fast and furious when the NHL plays live on TSN. The NHL's hardest-hitting lineup provides exciting action on television's best NHL hockey schedule. TSN's The NHL Tonight leads the way with 40 games featuring the league's top teams. Next on The NHL Tonight, the Edmonton Oilers visit Civic Arena in Pittsburgh to battle the Penguins. Edmonton and Pittsburgh, Sunday, March 5th at 7.30 Eastern and only on TSN. Update for you, the game between Ontario and Nova Scotia, the final two stones. This is the last one for Jill Greenwood. Humber Highland in Toronto. She leads 2-0 as they play the third over Colleen Jones. But she'll blow it by with her last stone. So it's the open draw for two for the skip from the Halifax Curling Club. Colleen Jones makes no mistake. She'll pick up her pair in the third as they go to the fourth end. It is Ontario 2 and Nova Scotia 2. Let's go to the game between Team Canada, the defending champion, Heather Houston, Newfoundland. Newfoundland leading 1-0 as they play the third. Heather Houston's final stone, Lakehead Ladies Curling Club. One at the back of the eight, and this draw will give her her second point. And now the defending champions with a record of 6-3 lead 2-1 over Newfoundland. Here are all the scores in the 14th round of this 1989. Scott Turnout of Hearts, Alberta, with a big three-ender, moving in front of PEI, 3-1. British Columbia, Saskatchewan, 2-2 as they go to the fourth. Ontario, Nova Scotia, 2-2. Manitoba, 3-1 over Quebec. And Canada with that two, leading Newfoundland, 2-1. Our feature game is BC against Saskatchewan. We're playing the fourth end of a 2-2 tie. And Rocks in play, out in front. First Yellowstone was placed in front. Top standards went to go around it again. We've seen this every end race. Yeah, they're, they're both very aggressive skips. Three. Makes for an interesting Four. game. Three. Fun to telecast. Okay. This is the first stone by the Saskatchewan okay. second Lori Keller. Okay, Rex out in front. Again, Linda. Um, I would say twelve and a half. Twelve and three quarters, twelve and a half. Yeah. Trying to vary around that guard and trying to keep the rock also in front of the T line. Nice and keen down the center. We can hear them talking about the draw weight. Wait, get it. They keep trying it. They're going for their two, and they haven't missed many of those. Beautiful come around. Now, Michelle's just calling for the freeze to try and freeze on the face of it to get around the guard herself anywhere in front of that stone that she can you know, make it very difficult for Pat to get forward to the single point. I think that's what a lot of people forget. They try to tap this one back or play some other shot. It is, the purpose is to hold them to one point. Lori Keller and her 
mere seconds ago. Leanne Everly, Joan Stricker are up the brushes. And just as she did with her first show, she wrecked it front, but opens up that center line. And a good swing. It was hard to tell if that was a little tight when she let it go. I think we should go. I think we should go there. Yeah. yeah. Because then, if I'm a little out, then we have to get yeah. it, and then they can't get the roll. <laughs> the rock's now open, so they're looking at trying to play I'll just play around the corner, the one just okay. off center line, and maybe half tuck around it. and her second stone. for you the game between Ontario and Nova Scotia 2-2 two -two ties they play the fourth final stone Jill Greenwood Humber Highland Curling Club in Toronto has one back eight draw for two and look at this they keep trading twos it's now Ontario 4-2 over Nova Scotia Colleen Jones they go to the fifth Jones Stricker there's a little bit of a chance here for Michelle with Jones shot to make the double the front one now that's three straight Saskatchewan rocks that have wrecked out in front are they not calling enough ice or I think Joan was maybe tight on that one we'll see Sorry, guys, here. started that one yeah rolled the rock a little bit when she let it go yeah it comes off that center line catches the front stone they're going to have to start making some shots when the what if we were to go right here she's garden. not going to be able to pull them out of the yeah. out of these jack clubs all the time you gotta say split or something it's not a bad idea for now keep it tight they have a few options here right nope bc with two stones <laughs> in now as they throw a third one top 12 and one on the button that great draw by yeah. julie sutton we go in and uh, open it up. They get a hit and roll. And yeah. I think we should just guard it. Guard it. She doesn't got anything right now. Yeah, she doesn't have anything. We got two soft fingers. Well, you heard yeah, Georgie's no, comments. We're just going to come down in here and put the stone right here. Not too deep. Let's just guard it and see what she does. 14 and a half. You could come into the house in a different position, but you still leave the double guard. takeout or a hit and roll so or something that would be to your benefit. I think this is probably a good call. Yeah, it's a good call. Georgina Hawks and her first stone here. Whoa, whoa. Wait, good. Whoa. Yep, dying. Really. Whoa, let it die. Whoa. 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 Yep. Whoa. Good, that's whoa. good. Whoa. 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 No point to trying to get in at this, you know, at this stage. You get down to past the uh, you you know, first stone. Maybe you could, you know, go the other way and leave them the long shot at the double back. Okay. Everybody has skipped, however. We're just trying to listen, try and listen to Michelle here. Don't really have anything else, eh? Okay. Okay. One of the things you hate to keep my doing when clear. you do have last rock is guarding. For the simple reason that if they do get the angle raise or, or get movement on a stone somehow, it's your guard that causes you the problem. But in this case, it was a good call, I think. Looks like they're going to play uh, a raise takeout if they can here. Why not leave that and maybe try and try the other side of the ice? Maybe a raise in or even draw. I think they feel they can make the takeout off the front one. We'll drive it straight back. You have to make a decision. It's either take off the guards or go for a raise that you feel comfortable with. Michelle may be leaving that yellow rock on the other side of the house for a potential desperation I last shot. I think you may be right. Would 
Joan was playing the raise on her own shot, and that rock curled again. He, he Sorry about that first one. Just dumped it on the edge of the raise. Same thing, guys. There it is. I'll try, yeah. I don't want to take it, though. <laughs> well, we could have taken it. Yeah, you guys could have taken it there. Yep. Nice. And so much more. <laughs> made a good point, Ray. It's not just this game that Michelle is having to bail her team out. She's had some men facing her in the last three games, and you can't keep doing that. You need the help from your team. Georgina Hawk. very nicely. No problem in hearing George. Then. You can always, <laughs> she's always clear. Good communication. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just a little farther out. <laughs> sure came up good there. So, because I was a little bit further out. Going back to the race they tried the first time. Maybe we should open up the whole front. Yeah. Or just play a ball. Stop it straight back. Well, they're going to play the raise. Uh, they were just going to try and run that back and uh, try and remove one of those stones, run their own stone back for in a takeout fashion. Now he's talking about playing quietly, I think, Linda, and just tapping it into the ring. Thinking maybe just drawing. Tapping that straight back in a second. Of course, the problem with playing the takeout weight, if they miss hit it, they don't get the rocks in the house removed, and they leave a guard up. And then it pops that one. We can hit it on an angle. Get that one on an angle and bring it in. Yeah, that one might be better, actually, if you want to play it because that way. we got to play by that one. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't have, a, you know, a whole lot of room. Place. Because play that and this, then yeah, we then, yeah, exactly. The first thought was to I run, try and run that okay. stone back yeah, onto one of these here. She's now, I think, changed her mind and she's going to the other that's side because it's a better that's angle. She's going to put the huh. raise, uh, just the tap back on this stone right there, trying to move it into the rings like so. Anywhere into that area would just be a bonus. I think that's a good shot. It can angle a couple of ways, actually. It can go either straight back or at the angle. The angle's better. To draw, you'd have to cut it close between those two rocks. I think it's a better raise as well. They mentioned they'd have to go through the two red stones to raise the other red, yellow rock. This is definitely a better angle here. Good what look at Michelle. And an opportunity here, as two? Ray and Linda have said, chance now to bail her rink out of a big jam. Okay. In the fourth end of a 2-2 tie with British Columbia, the first stone for the Saskatchewan skip. Yeah, Pilates! Yeah, hurry! Hurry, Pilates! Hurry, Pilates! This one's curling, I think. Hurry! I haven't quite figured out yeah, the spot. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. She had to wait. Just, uh, it just curled too much for her. Well, this is a great chance for Pat Sanders. Okay, good try. It's a little tight. What they're looking at, Linda, what Pat and George are concerned about, uh, right uh, in front of George where she's standing now, you can see them now. They're looking hey, at the angle of these two stones. She's not going to play that shot. I think it's too short. I don't think she's going to get it. We put another one in. She can't play that shot on the inside. She's going to get it. I think if we put another one in the house, she's going to have to this go is, These are the one. stones they're talking about right here. She says if she hits it on the inside, she can drive this stone back in the right angle. So she's thinking about taking it away from her. Now, she could do that by coming down and placing her own stone someplace in this position. Little X's and O's yeah, game there, Ben. 
Yeah, I know, but... Just listen. Well, what do you want to do? Put one right here? <laughs> That'll take it away from her, Georgie. That may be the shot. Yeah, because right then she's there. got this. What do you well, think, Linda? Away, I, I think it's a shot Michelle would have to play. It's not an easy shot by any yeah, means. You have to get the right angle on the front yeah, line with the right pass. wing. Not everybody makes those shots. <laughs> and Pat Sanders has made a lot of them against me. I think George is right there. Well, not everyone you, makes them, though. Well, what would you have a stick if he makes that shot up? Okay, well, want to put one right here, then? That doesn't help, though. What helps? There's nothing you can do about it. We'll come right around. I just can't give her a shot. Unless I put mine tight enough to raise it. I'd rather go around and make it really tough. Yeah, well, I don't want her to draw anywhere because it's got really good draw weight. Because I'm thinking, if you just get in here, right, she's, she's going to be more temp more worried having three than just two, right? She'll play that shot if there's only two, but if we put a third one in here, she might get a little bit worried. Okay. So she's worried, Georgie. Yeah, it's on already. Here, she just... That's a good point, too, Linda. For the raise. You want to come in behind that key line. Is that outside one all lined up? Is that what you're worried about? Well, I know those out. Yeah, but do you think she'd look at it? <laughs> I think it's a tough shot to make because I don't know. I it's, pulling, it. it's pulling so much. I know she is, but I don't know if she'd think of it. Like, I think she's thought of it already because the other team's been lining it up for us. We can hit it if you want. It's just if you hit yeah. the same shot, George. What? <laughs> and if you're short, that's great. Because I think if, you, if we go too deep, then she might just come right on top of you, right? I think you throw right. 12 and a half. You're right, Julie. Really? Pat Sanders and her first stone here in the fourth end. Well, it's interesting now. We'll see if Michelle gives some consideration to the shot that, that Pat was so worried about, Linda. Probably not a double after that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking at the rock that's open to them, a possible double takeout. I've been driving the one of them to bite her back. We're hitting it thin and getting the other one, but they're both tough. Like uh, actually, isn't it? We well, heard Joan talk about the double. Is there a double here, she says, hitting Matt and moving across here? The shot that Pat Sanders was concerned about leaving her was this shot here, hitting that one and moving this stone in towards the shot block, into that area there. But so far... Looks like a pretty tight hole, but... But so far, Michelle hasn't even looked at it. But yet we don't want to give up four. But you know, you know, uh, Linda, now they're looking at it. All you have to do is move that rock three feet in your second shot. I mean, I think I would definitely yeah, play that. You come in to here. Sure. Yeah. And now the rock that Pat Sanders just put there would be would be covered the stone you punch in. Yeah. But then it's kind of off. I don't know why the show has to play that. Okay, mm -hmm. It could be that it's the side ice. She's a little well, worried that's, about that's the weight. A, that's true. But you're really in trouble. You gotta. 
think it's time for the team consultation. You only have to move that rock uh, you know, about three feet. Pretty tight hole. Yeah, you don't have a big hole. We can even count them out of it, you know. Oh yeah, we can get An update for you on the game between Manitoba, Quebec. It's 3-1. Manitoba leading in the fourth end. Final stone, Agnes Charette. Look at all the stones in play in this game. And the Buckingham skip comes through with the draw. To the back of the fourth with the pick up one. It's now 3-2. Manitoba leading as they play the fifth. Perhaps a surprising call here, Ray. Yeah, I... I no, I do agree with you, Linda. The ice on the outside is tougher, but uh, uh, it's a much easier raise to make. Now, we thought she would play this one. This is the one that Pat Sanders was concerned about, because you only have to move this rock about three feet, and you apply second shot, which would be great. She's decided to come down, Vic, to hit this one onto this one to oh. try and push it into the rings here. I think of the two shots, Linda, this is the more difficult one. Well, she not only has separation between the two rocks, which makes it harder, but she has to come through a hole of the other two rocks, the other two opposition rocks. All right, well, we'll see now if she made the right decision. She really she doesn't want to give up four, and right now she's facing three. It's a great shot if she can make it. Hurry for the line. The one thing about this shot, the, the ice is Hurry much easier line. to read Hurry. here. But she needs Hurry. to... if they can squeeze in their own stone. Yeah, you're gonna bump. Pinky's third shot, though. <laughs> the pack could bump her own up now to like to score three. Could she even split her shooter on to get four? Yeah, wait for that. Would it hit it? Would it hit it? Yeah, it's okay. Well, the weight was fine. But I think it, by trying to split, you have to come pretty well, close to that front know, stone. Yeah, so. you have to get it on the inside. So I more than you just threw. Play the sure three, and maybe if it curls enough, you might get the four. What do you think about the, the raise? And I, I think the other raise is simpler. I, I do realize maybe with the, and you could play the outer going into it maybe. Uh, all you had to do is move it a foot and a half, two feet. I don't think I would have played this shot. It was a very tough shot. She was close if she'd had the weight. I yep. must admit, you yep. seem to know the line on that other one. Do the ice well. Yes. The final stone of this fourth hand, Winners Columbia. A chance for at least three, possibly four. The girls can get four. Uh, she'll raise it up and she'll take her sure three. And a big end for that lady, Pat Sanders, and British Columbia as they pick up three points here in the fourth now lead five to two over Saskatchewan. An update, Ontario, Nova Scotia, 4-2 Ontario leading, final stone, Colleen Jones, Halifax Curling Club. Look at that, that stone at the back, jammed it, a steal of one for Ontario. They're at their fifth end break, and it is Ontario leading 5-2 over Nova Scotia in a very important game for the rink from Halifax. The heart will tell you, we are in Kelowna for the 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts. More in just a minute. All right, you're about to graduate into the Purex building. So never forget your mission in life is to be strong. Much softer. That's what it's now. Present softer.
Imagine you had the power to visit yourself in the future. Pretty fancy. Can we afford to live down here? Just a cold month. A London Life representative showed us how. Oh, we used to laugh at life insurance. We stopped laughing. Freedom 55 is more than life insurance. Financial program protects the family and the future. Imagine the freedom of Freedom 55. Talk to a London Life representative. How are the kids? No kids yet. Better start knitting. The Labatt Tanker, symbol of curling excellence in Canada. Five former world champions will compete, including Ontario's Russ Howard, Rick Folk of British Columbia, and Northern Ontario's Al Hackner, plus defending champion Pat Ryan returns, making the strongest field ever. Live and exclusive curling action from the National Championship. Two draws daily, plus highlights from ongoing games. The Labatt Briar starts Sunday on TSN. on the game between the defending champions Heather Houston Team Canada and Newfoundland it's a 2-2 tie as they play the fifth this is the final stone for Heather Houston out of the Lakehead Ladies Curling Club in Under Bay gets it by the guard draws up to that one at the back for a couple of points and now the defending champions lead it 4-2 as they take their fifth end break all the scores in this 14th round of the 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts. Alberta PEI tied 3-3. British Columbia, that big three-ender, puts them in front of Saskatchewan 5-2. Nova Scotia, Colleen Jones in a very important game for her. She has three losses in trouble, trailing 5-2 to Ontario. Manitoba leading Quebec 3-2. And Canada ahead of Newfoundland 4-2. The defending champions, Heather Houston, another rink with three losses. We're in Kelowna, British Columbia, the Memorial Arena for this 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts. Glad that you're with us as it becomes nail-biting time. So many rinks chasing the leader right now. That is Saskatchewan with a record of 7-2. Manitoba with a record of 7-3. Julie Sutton out of the hack. And this is her first stone here in the fifth end. And again, Linda Rocks in play. Saskatchewan has to leave the rock tub. Look at that. And a miss. But they need some rocks to play. They need some guards up front here. They're going oh. around the guard in front. Julie really Sutton blew it by that corner guard. Let's talk a little bit about some of the situations, the possibility. This is Lori Keller who settled in for her first stone, the Saskatchewan second. If Saskatchewan wins this game, they come back to win. They trail right now 5-2, and Manitoba should lose. Then Saskatchewan would clinch first place. But if Manitoba wins their game, and right now they lead Quebec 3-2, and Saskatchewan would have to win both games. Well, that's what's on the line here. Manitoba win, and Saskatchewan has to win both. Sorts of interesting things happening though with okay. Nova Scotia down three points at this stage of the game to Ontario. There's still the possibility of almost all the teams at the top tied with four losses. <laughs> and again, the 6:30 a.m. looms large. Tick tick tick. There will be no wine and candle tonight. <laughs> And since all the top teams don't play each other again, well, there's a possibility to have six or seven teams with four losses. That's right, and that's why BC is so pumped for today's game. They are still in there if the right things happen on the other sheet. Julie Sutton, second stone, has a chance to make amends, and she does. Makes the takeout at the top of the four, and those two red rocks belong to British Columbia. just aren't going Saskatchewan's way. They tried to come around the corner guard and six, and now they're facing two rocks in the forefoot, so they'll have to make a yep. play on them. Three. 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 Lori 
Keller? Better shot is, I mean, she may, may have been able to hit that right in the pocket and split them both off, but is, she, is that the better shot to get the roll over in front of one? Probably this shot or rolling behind the corner guard are the two best shots. <laughs> Removing both the stones in the house isn't critical at this point. Rocks in play are a benefit to Saskatchewan. They're trying to get their two points. Okay. There's a possibility BC could miss hit this and jam the yellow one onto the red one. yours over in front, the possibility of a jam. That's what you asked for, and if, if you leave rocks in the house, it's not bad, because as okay. we've talked about before, coming down and tapping them back provides protection. It gives you backing, and those jam shots on takeouts do often occur. Well, we saw in that update, Nova Scotia tried to make the takeout, and Ontario Stone jammed on one of their own at the back, and Ontario it's stole nine. one to lead 5-2 yes, over Colleen right, Jones. Think. This is Joan Stricker, Saskatchewan third, and her first stone here in fifth half. back to pass shots, they're yep. taking what they call safe ice, throwing good weight, taking a few inches of ice, trying to catch it, hopefully a little bit on the inside. Didn't get the roll towards the other Yellowstone, but Saskatchewan will have to make a decision. Could try to come around the corner guard again. Yeah. Or Michelle could play down to these other red spots. Block on there, yeah. That would be nice. She could either tap them back, but the decision she's made is to play takeout way to get a roll from one onto the other. Joan Stricker and her second stone. Ray has just left us for the moment. He's headed down to ice level for the fifth end break. Oh boy, see, now by rolling out, takes away the two possibilities. That's why Ray and I have talked so much about playing just path back ways, trying to keep the rocks in play. Yeah. Big take away, you don't know. If there's a little bit off the broom, it's going to roll all the way out. And Joan has struggled with those. Saskatchewan just isn't capitalizing on those opportunities today. <laughs> Not looking very happy. No, Joan Stricker is on the left. Michelle Schneider is on the right. I'd say they got off to that great start. Then they just had a couple of bumps and a couple of bumps. It just hasn't worked out that well for them. Sanders misses now and gives the two-point possibility right back. Yeah, you just put it out on center. Your hand. It was just a little bit. 
bit wide. And Saskatchewan can take the two points this end. It's a nice lift going into that fifth mm -hmm. end break. And they've struggled, and the other thing is it's a struggle at the end of the week. Some of these teams, like BC, have had their losses out of the way and seem to be coming back, but Saskatchewan looks like they're a little bit tense out there. I want to tell everybody that Ontario, Nova Scotia blanked the sixth end, so it remains Ontario 5, Nova Scotia 2, as they now play the seventh. Yeah, but if I'm sure we guard it too, though. Yeah, let's go behind that corner. Too much? A little bit left. This decision is made thinking that they can get a chance for three. If she can tuck around the guard, Pat Sanders would have a tough shot to remove them, and the opportunity for three might be there. It's a risky take, though. If you go to the open side, you play for the safer two. Yeah. This isn't perfect. You do set up a double opportunity. The first stone oh for God. the Saskatchewan skip here in the fifth end. Eyes all right. For Wade. For Wade. Wait on me. nicely it came around the guard as they were sweeping it. Was? <laughs> the double there? Should we get the first one? I'm not sure if the double is there, but Pat's going after the first <laughs> one and hoping to maybe roll over a little bit and make it more difficult for Michelle to get her two. Georgina's uh, parting comment to Pat as she headed up the ice was make sure you get the first one. Oh, a three in a tie game would be big for Saskatchewan at this point. Georgina Hawks puts down the brush. Pat Sanders. Final oh. stone here in the fifth. Oh. Leading five to two. Oh. She got the front one. Yeah, I would say so. I would sit on that. The benefit of rolling over, of course, is Michelle has difficulty drawing in. She has to hit almost the forefoot. She's forced then to play the takeout, and the chance is that she might roll too far and not get the two. Nose hit. Nose hit, though, would leave her as second shot, and she'd pick up two points. Playing down the straight center line. A couple of inches of ice here. The final stone of this fifth end, and a chance for two for Saskatchewan, and they could cut the BC lead to just one. Schneider will pick up one and British Columbia maintains a two-point lead at 5-3 as they go to their fifth end break. An update for you on the game between Manitoba and Quebec. It's 3-2 Manitoba as they play the fifth final stone. Chris Moore out of the Fort Rouge Curling Club in Winnipeg. Look at all the rocks in play. Will it stop in time? No, it'll sail into the back and through, but still Manitoba picked up two more, and so Chris Moore is really on a roll. She is hot. It's five to two over Quebec as they go to the sixth. We're in Kelowna for the 1989 Scott Turner of Hearts, and Ray is standing by with Pat Sanders. Pat, that was an interesting fourth end. Were you a little surprised that she maybe didn't try the the raise that you were so worried about, the one on the other side of the ice? Well, if that was me, I would have, I might have tried that shot because there were a lot of uh, 
possibilities there. She could hit it with just about any kind of weight and make any kind of shot, I thought. Yeah, I, I thought so too. Of course, your, your angle of seeing it was much better than ours, but it looked like if she, just, you know, she moved it in for a second shot, it would be very difficult for you even to get two. Well, that's what I thought, but it was out in the frost, and uh, you know, you're always worried about your rock dying out there. Pat, you're, you're back skipping. Do you feel comfortable now? You've done a lot of skipping, of course, in the past. Do you feel comfortable now? I always feel comfortable skipping. Um, I enjoy it. It's a challenge. You, you, you chose to play third for the season, so I just was wondering if, you know, stepping up like this uh, was difficult for you. No, not at all. I think Julie's just one. She's a really, really good curler, and I enjoy curling third for her. Terrific. Well, the team looks very at ease now, and you're going well, so good luck in the rest of the game. Thanks, Pat. And certainly a win here would keep them very much in contention at this 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts. We'll be back to Kelowna in just a minute. Welcome back to RTSN Control Center in Toronto. I'm Michael Lansford. The Devon Inquiry has finished hearing for today. They will not resume tomorrow. Tomorrow is an off day. The next day for the Devon Commission Inquiry will be Monday, and our coverage will begin at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. As for the period of time that you are watching curling, the short period of time, the most significant uh, discussion between Armstrong and Francis sent around July of last year, 1988, Charlie Francis said that was the period of time when he had uh, made up with Ben Johnson, and he was again coaching Johnson. He said Johnson did not immediately go back on a steroid program. As for later months, August and September, we're not sure. He did say that a number of his athletes were on steroids last July, including the Ty Williams, Mark McCoy, Angela Taylor, Isagenko, and others. That generally is the most significant discussion over the short period of time that you missed. You can see all the details on Sports Desk at 6.30 Eastern Time. No dubbing tomorrow. Join us at 10 o'clock. That's a.m. Monday morning. The symbol of excellence, Rolls-Royce. And of all the magnificent automobiles bearing this crest, there is one single classic that surpasses all others, the legendary Silver Ghost, now recreated by Franklin Mint Precision Models. In a collector's piece so exceptional, it's the official model authorized by Rolls-Royce Motor Cars. The Silver Ghost, only one was ever built. The 1907 masterpiece that established Rolls-Royce as the master car builder. It passed every endurance test of its time and still runs perfectly today. The priceless flagship of the Rolls-Royce line, now in a stunning die-cast model with protectively coated silver-plated trim and assembled for more than 127 pieces. Each feature is authenticated by Rolls-Royce motor cars, like the removable spare tire, sterling silver-plated trim, exactly like the original. Tiny instruments, pedals, and controls. Engine detailing precise to the last spark plug. You can almost hear the ghost-like hum of its motor. Details to satisfy the most demanding car enthusiast and sophisticated collector a showpiece for home or office. To order, call 1-800-543-1012. Use your credit card or mail 3625 by check or money order to the Franklin Mint. You will be billed the balance in three monthly payments of 3625 each. With your model comes a history and certificate of authenticity signed by Rolls-Royce Motor Cars. The imported Silver Ghost is available only from Franklin Mint Precision Models with the die-cast metal craftsmanship of models costing thousands of dollars. Now only four payments of $36.25 each. Call 1-800-543-1012. The Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost, a most incredible model of the world's most incredible car. There's nothing quite like owning a Rolls-Royce. Welcome back to Kelowna and this 14th round of the 1989 Scott Turner of Hartford. Let's get you caught up on all the scores. Prince Edward Island and Alberta. It is a 3-3 tie as they play the sixth. British Columbia still by two over Saskatchewan as they go to the sixth end. Melissa well, Saligo settling in for her second stone, the BC lead. We want to tell you it's still 5-2 Ontario ahead of Nova Scotia as they play the seventh. Manitoba leading Quebec 5-2. They're playing the sixth. And Newfoundland has picked up a pair in the sixth, and they've tied Heather Houston, the defending champion, Team Canada, 4-4. Oh, 
tell you, Ray, I think Manitoba's chances are looking better and better. We see some upsets possible out here. It could be that Manitoba could rise to the standings, to the top of the standings, and we could have a bunch of ties. <coughs> yeah, it looks like the, we could be in for that long day tomorrow that you talk about, uh, Linda. This is Lori Keller. And that was a big miss last end. If they had gotten the two, Saskatchewan would have been still slugging away here, even though they'd be down a point. But it seems like a real struggle for them. Well, you know, you mentioned the point about Shell Schneider, all, you know, being almost like a man in a leaky rowboat, keep bailing and bailing and bailing. And now she can't bail fast enough. She's not coming through with a shot to save her. And a shot like that one for a two, a hit and stick, you expect that from her, or we expect it from her, and she couldn't make it. Well, but there comes a point, Dick. You know, I mean, it was an outturn. It was an outturn hit, and it was a relatively simple takeout from me. You know, I was downstairs, and my angle wasn't as good as yours, of course. But you know, she gets as soon as she gets the two points. You know, it really is a confidence builder. She's back in the game. But everybody misses, and, and you just can't keep making those big shots. Well, she—that's the thing. She was making them. Yeah, she was. Yeah. And she's not out of this game yet, or anything. Trailing yeah. by two, no. That was a big point. The thing about Michelle is she's a very good skip. And she knows how to get back in the game. We've seen her play very aggressively. Sure. She's going to put the guards up as long as she can and go for the steal. BC looks nice and relaxed now, though. You know, they just you can just sort of see the change in them. Uh, Pat Sanders is back at the head, and uh, she looks very comfortable there. And, and uh, Georgie's played a lot of third for her in the past, and as you very well know, you've played them many times. And, and uh, they just, uh, and they've got their eye over on the Nova Scotia Ontario game. They're kind of trying to watch that at the same time, only keep their concentration in their game that's because right. that's a big game for them. They're great players. They just had those few, actually, just a couple of bad shots, not few bad games. So BC is still in there. sometimes talk about how teams rearrange themselves in the middle of a competition, but whatever's best for the team, and I think BC had a chat and decided this was best for the team. It's nice to see them out there working so well together. And it's not just the fact that actually they've rearranged positions. Melissa Saligo's also got a very sore leg, and she's hanging in there and playing very well. Well, you play your whole year and sometimes your whole life to get to one of these events, and uh, when you get here, you're sure like to, you know, to participate through the whole thing and not, you know, not come down with an injury like Melissa has. But, uh, so she'll tough it up as long I'll as she play. can. But I think, I'm sure if she feels she's hurting the team, then she'll make the decision to, you know, That's right. to right. get out of there. Right now she's just gritting her teeth and she's playing very well. Well, we have seen this week uh, Diane Nelson, the yeah, fifth player up. from BC, come into the game for the BC lead, Melissa Saligo. Try and get the rocks uh, out in front, uh, throw them up out in front. Uh, that particular one uh, didn't come to the center line. I think you're going to see Pat Sanders now uh, go in behind one of those two. Exactly They're corner guards. They played the intern draw many times. We saw it in the fourth end. Looks like the shot that they're opting for. This is the same spot where you tried to go behind around that one before, exactly. That's what they're talking about. Go this way? Yeah. They've tried this before, they know the path. Perfect line. We've had a second straight blank end on the game between Ontario and Nova Scotia. So it remains 5 2. Ontario leading Colleen Jones from Halifax. Georgina Hawk. Point. But she's young and strong. Right. 
makes all the difference. There they are after working hard. There you see Melissa Sligo in the foreground, uh, phys ed student at the University of Victoria. She had cartilage surgery on her right leg. She says it's bothersome when she's in the hack, uh, when she has to bend it, of course, but not one after the extension. Joan Stricker, the Saskatchewan third. That stone tend to stop into the center line gives the uh, Saskatchewan a good chance. Joan just can't just can't buy a shot today. She, 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 she talked earlier about uh, major league dumping, and in other words, uh, turning them over, and turning them over badly, and I guess that's what she's doing because she. <laughs> Russ, it wasn't really close to making the hole. It was almost a direct raise. What do we do? You guys, can you get an inside roll off that? I'm trying to see if yeah. the rock is exposed, but she pushed into Pretty the ring. Pretty tough. They say, yeah. Tough inside roll. Pretty tough inside roll. First six. Okay, I'm not going to get it Everybody has an idea. <laughs> what do you think? Hit and roll? Yep. Okay. You roll over your top bar. Yeah. That's what you want, right? Who want to roll? Yeah. Yeah, we're on top. Yeah. yeah. We can even forge be out. They're looking to hit the guard and yeah. roll to the side. I think not a bad shot, Ray. They don't have much of an opportunity to get into the house, and they don't want to leave that rock, a potentially dangerous rock in the center yeah. area. Do you like to call them, Linda? I, well, I thought they might be more aggressive, but it's not, not a bad call for them. Well, I, I, I have to be honest with you. I would have come around that stone and, and to the top of the eight foot or top of the four foot. It's just, to, you know, you can't protect everything. Now, it's hindsight straight. Uh, you know, she hit it wrong, Wait, and I guess she can't hear it off. You don't think I started off. that one? But uh, you give, by playing up there, you give Michelle the first chance to come in What have we got here, Laura? I think the reason they're doing it is they oh, are two points up. They do feel in control. Trying to keep things to the side. Couldn't get all three. You couldn't get them all out of there. That's, that's no, the but it was the center line guard. Here's our first big disagreement, Ray. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> our first fight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you that it wasn't a bad shot to try the guard uh, or the draw, but I don't think the guard was a bad shot. Okay. So that's sort of middle of the road ground for you. They're going after this one. Must be fully exposed. I think they can get a roll. I can see to the gold medal. <laughs> I don't want to give up another thing in. Linda does have that on you. This time. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting comment by Michelle. As she said she didn't want to give up another big end. She doesn't want to leave that rock in play. She doesn't just want to give up another big end. She's going to have to score one of these times. British Columbia leading 5-3 here in the sixth end. Oh, right off. The first skip stone from Saskatchewan's Michelle Schneider. Right off, right no. off. No. No, no, nothing. No. Okay. Oh, my. Punches that stone to the button, and it is buried. Okay. Well, yeah, she's back a bit. I think she slid a little bit narrow and tried to put the rock back oh, and it got into the street of the head. <laughs> Poor Michelle is not happy with that. Yeah. And she's played so 13, well. 12 and a half, 12, 7, 5. What, you hate this microphone? Well, it's interesting because you know she played the hit and, and she had to she play down that frost line and we, playing those hits down that line, they, they hang out there, they don't come very much. We've seen yeah. a couple of do Where do you want it, right do in? That. Okay. You can see the cross line, you know, just running down the, the ice, and, and uh, she can just sit on top of it and runs down and they run pretty straight. She could have, you know, gone around and played through the hole, played the intern draw to the forefoot, because she's been drawing so well around the long guard that uh, Georgie Hawks left yeah. on the center line. I'm surprised she didn't do that. I was a little surprised. I was surprised at her comment, trying to hold them down, and usually she says, I'm going after it, I'm going for my point. Yeah, you've got to score now. You're down. Uh, 
They're down the two points, and that's the shot. If I had been Michelle, I would have tried. That was the pad just tried. Tried and failed, unfortunately, for DC. And now it opens up that stone and the button, and possibly maybe a hit roll either way. Interesting, Ray, because before that, there was very little for Michelle Schneider. And now the rock really comes up there. Yes, you know, that's one of the things here in, a, in arena play. We've talked about the concentration needed. We want to look at other, want to look at other games here at the Memorial Arena. But you might also hear things from other sheets of ice. You have to be very specific. It's hard to pick up the individual voice to listen for the sweeping call. Often people will make gestures or something to try and get that communication going. I mean, wasn't it a couple of years ago we did something where somebody was using a whistle? Penny the Rock uses a whistle. She played for Colleen Jones. Yeah. And, and also gets her own team. And actually, I think there was a, a men's team that did that. Hooray! I think so. I'm sure that I just can't remember. Hooray! I hate to think. Okay. Never mind. Ten whistles going up. Okay, Michelle. Uh, she can't buy a shot today. No. Well, she, you know, she drilled the well those first four ends. Just uh, the last couple ends, she's missed a few. Taking a little bit more there. Because it's like you didn't kind of almost look like you put it back. She looks more like you put it back to me because you slid narrow and kind of put it back. But obviously, obviously that isn't what happened. I think they feel they're having <laughs> trouble reading the ice. <laughs> they make them laugh about it. Hey, hey, little man on our shoulder, where are you right about now? Well, you should throw the same, because we got that back one. I think that's about good. Final stone of this sixth end. 5 3. BC leading. They have one on the button. Here's a chance for two. One's not coming out. No. Stayed right on, the, on that line that we talked about. That's something. And Pat Sanders just looks at it in disgust because she can't understand it either. And so maybe a break here for Saskatchewan as they only get or have to give up the one. BC takes it. They now lead 6-3 to three after 6-10. An update for you, the game between Manitoba and Quebec. This is the final two stones. This is Chris Moore, Port Rouge Curling Club. It's 5-2 to two at this point. And now Agnes should at Buckingham, Quebec. Line one, top eight. The draw will be good for two more. Everybody, all the Kings men help get it there. So they'll go to the seventh. It's five to four. Manitoba leading Quebec. More from this 1989 Scott Turnout apart in just a moment. If you think you don't have time for a full hot breakfast, take a look at this. McCain's Super Fast Breakfast. Just pull off the tab. Pop it in your microwave, and in just three minutes, it's ready. A full and delicious breakfast. Put a little zip in your morning with McCain Microwave Breakfast. They're ready in just three minutes. Super fast breakfast from McCain. The full breakfast you thought you didn't have time for. We need to meet. No, it's got to be somewhere discreet. Bay Street has it. He's leaving for London. There's something heavy going down. You're in London. Meet him at the airport and stick to him like glue. I don't care how you do it. I want to know what he's doing and why. Hello, Mr. Cameron. Good morning. Your club boarding pass, sir. Enjoy your flight. Thank you. Goodbye. Good morning, sir. I like your style, Jack. This will do perfectly. Very well organized. But I have to think of my own people. The way I see it, it'll be better for all of us. Meet him at the airport. A drink to celebrate. Pleasant trip? Yes. Very. 
club. British Airways Business Class delivers you ready-to-do business only from the world's favorite airline. The thrills and excitement of NBA basketball are on TSN. Tension from division rivals and top teams on television's best basketball schedule keeps you at the hoop. This season, TSN takes you courtside for action from over 40 regular season games. Run with the best, all the way to a world championship. The Seattle Supersonics battle the New York Knicks live from the Garden. It's the NBA on TSN live Tuesday, March 14th, 7.30 Eastern. TSN, the Sports Network, the most comprehensive curling coverage in the country. We are in Kelowna, but next year, 1990, the Scott Turner of Hearts will be in the nation's capital, Ottawa. Bring you up today in all the scores here in the 14th round of the Tournament of Hearts, Alberta by three over PEI. They've had two three-enders. Debbie Shermack from Edmonton, British Columbia leading by three over Saskatchewan. Ontario continues to lead 5-2 over Nova Scotia after blanks 6 and 7. Manitoba by 1 over Agnes Charette from Buckingham, Quebec. And Team Canada, Heather Houston in Newfoundland, Laura Phillips from St. John's in a 4-4 tie. British Columbia and Saskatchewan, 7th end action. Getting ready to play second stones, and the first is from Julie Sutton of BC. They're being rocked in play again, some aggressive play, and Saskatchewan was looking at two BC counters and a nice hit and roll on that last rock to set up the yellow stone in front of the red stone. And she's hoping to at least remove the rocks or rearrange them a little bit. Do in that yeah, situation. That is, that is good shot by Julie Sutton. Yeah, what? Back, back right? Yeah. Good so wait indication. Oh, let's play hack. And so we'll play hack for the back line. Michelle Schneider puts down the brush for. Lori Keller. This is the first stone for the Saskatchewan second. Yeah. So yeah. far, this is a rather surprising game in that misses seem to be determining the game's outcome rather than the great shots we've been seeing so far. That's for the best you can do there, Linda. She rolls it right to the corner. Still biting there on the edge. Yeah. Looks very close. Julie Sutton, the 86 and 87 Canadian Women's Junior Champion and 88 World Women's Junior Champion. Hit and get the roll of full eight foot. They were trying for the big roll right over to the biter, but that still was a good shot. I want to tell everyone that Team Canada, Heather Houston, and Newfoundland blank the seventh end, so they remain in a 4 4 tie playing the eighth. Heather Houston in a very big game. She comes in with a record of six and three. Laurie Keller. The hit, the inside roll, trying to draw it over as far as they can, and it bites the button. Just about the roll they wanted. They wanted to go right behind that center guard. Yeah, that's just a fraction away from being absolutely perfect rolls in behind that guard, she sets up the ball for a very good end. Okay. Yeah. She's Get still a got a good shot at her two points, which you know, puts her back in the Which way on top of there? Yeah. Get 
<laughs> they don't want to tempt things by getting too close to that guard. They've decided on normal takeout weight. Georgina Hawks and her first stone, the BC third. Oh, very close. Just gets a piece, and uh, boy, you almost want to forget about that little biter over on the edge of the, the 12. That belongs to Saskatchewan. So here's a good chance for Joan Sticker to make a very good shot. If she can get around this guard, top of the forefoot, really bury it, she can set up the ball through the good end for Saskatchewan. The Saskatchewan third, Joan Sticker. All right. Now she's going with the other turn, and then the reason, of course, is that if, if some of it is exposed, Better to have it on that side so that this doesn't set up the possible double for oh, Unfortunate shot here. And she raises the BC stone. You are right, the Ray. They didn't want to leave it sticking out the one side, but she had to get by the guard. Yeah. <laughs> An update for you, the game between Manitoba and Quebec as they play the seventh, and it's a 5-4 game. Chris Moore leading from Winnipeg. Final stone for the skip from the Port Rouge Curling Club. One stone, top eight. She'll make the hit stick, put two on the board. And it's now 7-4, Manitoba ahead of Quebec as they play the eight. Well, you know, there's no point commenting on, her, commenting on it. You know, I'm sure Joan's just sick about the shot herself. She just can't understand what's happening. Her rocks are really, really curling. Every, you know, whether it's, she's turning them all or maybe the surface of the stone is a little different. To, because it's just unbelievable how many of her stones are, are curling so much. Of course, when you're not sure yourself how well you're throwing them, you're not going to think that it could be the rock, and you just keep playing with the same rock. One of those frustrating games. Stricker and her second stone. Centerline guard. Did she get a hit and roll here, Ray Pasqua? That's what they were looking for, but not quite enough of the rock. It rolled too far. Slips too far and sits now at the back of the 12. Wide open for Pat. <laughs> I don't think it matters here in this case. I think if, uh, no matter what Pat does with this, if she hits the stick, I think uh, Michelle will probably ignore it and go behind the center line yeah. guard anyway. But we'll see. Got to score a couple points to get herself back in the game. Can't wait, wait, wait. Whoa! Pat Sanders and her first stone. Pat's been struggling a bit too, but this one looks like it's coming up now. Makes the hit, sits right there. Let me ask you something, Ray Linda, about just what you might want to do here. You need two points, but you only get a, would you maybe blank this or try to blank this if you can't get your two? It's not setting up as a two-ender, you see. No, I, I wouldn't even attempt to try and blank it. I said just mention to Linda, because you've got to get yourself back in this game. It's a 2 on one shot here. I would not, I would ignore this rock, as I mentioned before, completely and do exactly what she's doing. Try and get a rock right around this front rock, someplace in that area, and try and set up the score, too. So she has to make a move now. There's no sense in waiting and trying no, to No, you can't keep scoring. waiting. You, that's, uh, the game is a game of pressure, and uh, you've got to get yourself back in the game. If you keep uh, playing the rocks up and down the sheet, uh, Maybe once in a hundred times you'll catch up against a good team. You've got to force the game now. 
Michelle Schneider and her first stone here in the seventh end. Need help? And I may be a little more aggressive than some people okay. as far as the game's concerned. I love to play the game closed, and she didn't make the shot. It didn't work, and, uh, but if she gets around that guard, she's in good, good position. A reminder to stay with us right after the game for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Vita. A Mita long-distance copier, or fax machine, can reach out and send a copy to someone in just 15 seconds. Mm. Mita, or we make our great copiers. Georgina Hawk puts down the brush for her skip, Pat Sanders. This will be the final stone for BC here in the seventh. They lead 6-3. Saskatchewan does have the hammer. Take a look at this one. This is the same path that Joan Stricker was trying to come down. Trying to get around that center guard. They come off and they yeah, start to move. Good looking yeah. shot. Okay. A little bit further, it would have been perfect. It was coming in nicely at the end, as you said, Ray. Very straight and then good movement. When you need your <laughs> point. Which one do you prefer to try? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, they're kind of making light of it. That's great to see, too. You know, they're it's not out of it completely, but they're really been struggling. So it's too much? Michelle's been light yeah, on her draws. Right. I think maybe that's why she's opting for the takeout. She doesn't really have the confident weight this game. Which is unusual, because she really had it all week. She stood up where she wanted it almost. Every time. But it's a long week, uh, Linda. You can get a little tired. The final stone of the seventh end for Saskatchewan. And Michelle Schneider, as she tries to hit and stick against a couple of BC stones. That's a good solid takeout. And Michelle Schneider comes through with her one point here in the seventh, and now trails by two. It's six to four. British Columbia continues to lead. An update for you on the game between Team Canada and Newfoundland in a 4-4 tie as they play the eighth. This is the final stone for the defending champion, Heather Houston, Lakehead Ladies Curling Club. Lots of rocks in play here. Yellowstone, four foot. Just punch it back. Bite a button. You get one point, 5-4. Team Canada leading Newfoundland as they go to the ninth. Now let's check in on Ontario, Nova Scotia. After a couple of blanks, Colleen Jones Makes the hit, rolls towards the center. She picks up two. And so now they're playing the ninth. And it's Ontario leading just by one, by four, over the skip from Halifax. We'll have more from the 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts when we return to Kelowna in just a minute. The cars in the 50s, remember? Yeah, and how we used to dream of owning one. Yeah, you, the 57 Corvette, huh? Yeah, and you, the 56 T-Bird. Oh, oh, I miss those cars, Norm. They're back. The Franklin Mint brings back the cars of the 50s. Classics like the 57 Corvette, 
56 Thunderbird, 59 Cadillac Eldorado, 12 imported, authentically detailed, die-cast dream machines in the classic 1 to 43 scale. Remember how you dreamed of owning a Continental Mark II, the Studebaker Starliner, the Buick Skylark? Norm, this is a dream come true. Tell me, Eddie, tell me. They're all back. Fantastic recreations of the originals, handcrafted with up to 50 separate components, hoods and doors that open, tail fins, bucket seats, Detailed engines, each hand-polished in its original colors. Quality found on custom replicas costing hundreds of dollars and more. Hey, Norm, how long did you and Susie go steady? Uh, right up until she sold it paper. <laughs> <laughs> to start your Franklin Mint Cars of the 50s collection, call 1-800-447-7654. Get one imported model every other month for an incredibly low $75 payable in two monthly payments of only $37.50 each. Order by credit card and save the COD service charge. You'll also receive this handsome custom-designed wall display. Eddie, remember sitting in the drive-in, eating our fries, just wishing we owned one of them beauties? Yeah, and now we, we can, can own them all! <laughs> Order now and get this fascinating Cars of the 50s binder, including specs of each car and reprints of the original ads at no extra charge. Call 1-800-447-7654 and get the cars you always dreamed of owning. I love it, Norm. I love it. Happy birthday to Ontario third Yvonne Schmidt, who celebrates her birthday today. Unfortunately, no national championship as a present this year. Ontario and Jill Greenwood Humber Highland are out of it and it's 1989. Scott Turner of Hearts as we bring you up to date on all the scores in the 14th round. And Alberta has picked up one more. They now lead 7-3 over PEI. British Columbia still maintaining a two-point lead over Saskatchewan. Nova Scotia with their two in the eighth. Trail by one. Ontario leading in the ninth. Manitoba leading Quebec 7-4. And Canada by one over Newfoundland. As we return now to the game between British Columbia and Saskatchewan, eighth end action. Julie Sutton, the BC second. Deal or normal? Deal. And this will be her first stone. Peel waits for the peel shot, and they've played the first few very well. Saskatchewan looking for those center guards. Front stone. Lori Keller and her second stone. Okay. Not many decisions to make this end. It's the eighth end. The got them down two and they need to steal. It's going to be front rock as many as they can get up there. They didn't okay, really right. want that in the ring. No. Front end has played reasonably well for Saskatchewan. Leanne Everly, Lori Keller. It's been Joan Stricker and Michelle Schneider who have had the tough games today. Ray, I was mentioning earlier too, it's tough on Saskatchewan because they've had the losses at the end of the week. We're sort of on that downturn where BC maybe had losses early. Uh, they can get back in it. They're sort of on that upbeat. Yeah, you may be right, Sim. And I think also maybe uh, just a little bit tired. But I, th I think that uh, they're a good enough team. I, I would think that they're a good enough team to kind of regroup themselves. And uh, if they do happen to lose this game and come out, uh, you know, come out uh, in their next game and play well enough to win, it will always be very important yep. to them. Joan Stricker and her first stone, the Saskatchewan third. 6-4, BC leading. Yep, three. Three, easy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Looking 
for the roll. Good job by Jones. Into the top of the eight foot, and it might be peeking out just behind that guard. I don't think so. I think she'll probably just come around the long corner. Okay. Here's a good look at it. She'll just play the intern draw, I think, around the corner guard. Ray, I know you want to say hello to people as well at the Kelowna Curling Club. We were over there this morning, and you know, you talk about all the volunteers. Some of the volunteers never get to see a rock played because they've been assigned to other places around the city, and we met some of them this morning at the Kelowna Curling Club, and they treated us well. And in fact, you have a scarf. A nice red scarf. Yes, a lovely. Beautiful red Scott scarf. Turn on a heart scarf. So we want to say hello to the people at the Kelowna Curling Club and wish them well and thank them for their hospitality this week kind of matches my little red nose. Yes, it does. It's been chilly in this arena all week. There's two people at the Kelowna Curling Club, Peg and Pete Rattel, who are the managers, and I think they make that club one of the most welcoming places I've ever been to. They're always greeting you at the door and making you feel like it's a homey place. That makes a huge difference, too, when you have people like that. And it's just, that's the, the part of the game that uh, keeps us all so involved in it. Now, Georgina Hawks with her stone is just a little too deep. Top four. It just didn't bury Vic, uh, so it's another chance for Michelle to kind of get the hit and roll. Okay, let's just play half. Okay, do you want to play normal? What? Do you want to play normal? Yeah, normal. My thoughts go normal. Okay. Think back into this game, Linda, a little bit. One thing Pat Sanders has not done, she has not played a lot of draws. So, if, you know, if you can get a chance, she likes to maybe force her to have to draw against two or three. Get these rocks right behind the guard. It's our only Hurry. chance, really, to try and get something Hurry. going behind the guard. Hurry. 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 Got it by this time. There's the hit, the inside oh, roll. A couple of good shots by Jones. Jones Stricker comes up with probably her hit, two Jones. best shots of the game in this end. Little tight again? Yeah. It's a pad, eh? They just go. She might have one stone that's working more, Linda. Throw a hit at this. She might, and it's really hard to tell because she feels like she might be just rolling that handle a little bit as she lets go. Play it back 12 weight. Play it tight. The lady on the left in the yellow and blue BC jacket, that's Diane Nelson. As she sits behind the sheet watching her team members play. She's seen some action with lead Melissa Saligo battling a bit of a knee problem. Half, not even half. You heard what Georgie said, and then she can't, I can't even see half of it. Back 12. And if I tap the back, there was that something, because it comes in nicely there, she figures. And then if I rub off this, we can roll it, like almost half. Okay. Would there ever be a time, Ray, when you would just run the guard instead of playing these tap shots? Oh, I think so, sure. You know, she's got the uh, two-point lead. <coughs> uh, different players, you know, like, for example, Pat Ryan is the kind of player that might walk right up and try and run that right back. Back 12, almost half. But they have a good thought here, don't you think? I mean, if they tap that back, and come down and sit on the table and tap yeah. it back, and then it's up to Michelle to move it. And, and, and attempt to try to move it, you can drive it so. back onto it. It's a good shot if it's made perfectly. Yeah. You don't want to roll off it at all and keep leaving them that hit and roll behind the car. That little stack of yellow rocks back there. Whoa, whoa. Georgina Hawks and her second stone. Back. Now from that, we're going to see the difference Dynamite. between the two Go releases. Around. This is what you don't want to do, though. Oh. Joe Stricker might start it a bit. George looked like she might have put it back a bit, and that's the worst thing that could have happened. Not really as much as she thinks of it. Now, let me raise something here with you about the fact that Pat had made a decision, and then when they went back up, Julie Sutton made, gave them another idea, and they changed their mind. Uh, that was because of the amount of rock showing. I think the front end could see a little bit better how much the rock was showing. That was the only reason they would change their mind from the house. Maybe just a tad back. She 
You're just going to come down in here and put the rock anywhere in this Don't. area here. You can get it here. You can get it here. Half behind this rock right here. Don't. And you really put the pressure on Don't BC. Like Pat Sanders has last rock. But well, it's getting herself into a situation where she may have to make one of those dreaded cold draws, Linda. I guess that's why I would walk up to that guard sometimes. And even if you just peel it off, it exposes the shot rock. You have to do that, though, with her drop. She can't wait for your own right. sh shot to do that. But two up is a pretty good position for BC. They don't want to give up a steal. Michelle Schneider and her first stone for the Saskatchewan skip. Hello, this away. Block away. Where's the weight? First thing she can be here is okay, heavy, well, Vic. Going right in? Yeah, yeah, She's going to get it by the guard, take it right to the top of the 12-foot. No, it's not going in. It's not going in. Okay, that's good. I'm sure it's good. Well, Pat will want to draw now, because it looks like she may have to draw with her last one. to tuck it half around that rock. She doesn't want to leave it in the open. As I said, they can keep hitting and rolling. And leave her a very difficult last shot. <laughs> Two great shots by Joan Stricker really have turned this end around. Yeah. She'll feel really good about that because she, yeah, she missed a couple a shots. A few okay. shots earlier in this game and put them in some trouble. So it's nice to get that monkey off your back. about a quarter of the stone, I think, Vic, maybe a little bit more. Take nope. a look at it there. Act weight she's talking about. Sure. I just play and bump it back to the very back line. Got it there. Yeah, you want it back here. Yeah. How's that song? Okay. Well, our viewers saw you know, how much she could see of it, so she'll come down here and try and, like so, hit this stone on the outside, but she wants Linda Vick to roll away from there, to get away from that area, not sit right there. She can roll away, then she can force Pat into having to play that, that draw, the cold yeah, draw again. Bit. They're actually changing their mind with the weight range. I think she's just going to play very easy weight. I'm not sure how much of a roll she'll get. Way down there is... Well, you can see it on the corner of the stone. Uh, she talked, first of all, about hack weight, but you're right, Linda, with that ice, she must just be playing, you know, back eight-foot weight. And there won't be a lot of roll, but if okay. anything at all, you'd love to roll a little wee bit away from that spot. Three, just away! Jumped on it, then they now they've left it. Pretty good looking shot. I think she's lying through Linda. Yes, she is, of course. Don't be wide. That's exactly what seems to happen. She's decided to play just very quiet weight. Are we on second? Third. Okay. 
there you can see the two yellow stones, one on the button, one just biting the edge of the four, first and second shot, final stone for British Columbia, and skip past standard here in the eighth hand, and she's facing a couple. Trying to hold it up. There's the hit. Will it flip too far? No, she'll stick around and pick up the one point in just by that much. BC picked up one more here in the eighth. And now it is seven to four, British Columbia in front of Saskatchewan. And what a pressure shot by that lady, Pat Sanders. We'll have more from Kelowna in this 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts when we return to the Memorial Arena. <laughs> Daddy, meet your grandson. We named him after you, Scotty. So soft, they're softer than a kiss. Oh. You look beautiful. Scotty. So soft, they're softer than a kiss. If you think you don't have time for a full hot breakfast, take a look at this. McCain's Super Fast Breakfast. Just pull off the tab. Pop it in your microwave, and in just three minutes, it's ready. A full and delicious breakfast. Put a little zip in your morning with McCain Microwave Breakfast. They're ready in just three minutes. Super fast breakfast from McCain. The full breakfast you thought you didn't have time for. Here comes the rock. The wave looks very good. It's starting to curl nicely. Now, through this TV offer, the most complete, the most exciting, the most informative curling video ever produced. Now, what a shot. Ed Lukowicz has done it again. It's the most professional curling video yet. From a former world champion and winner of over 40 major curling events, LaVasse presents the world's best curling video, Ed Lukowicz Curling Tips. Curling is one of the fastest growing sports in the world. And this video is the most complete curling video ever produced. Equipment, technique, strategy, and counter strategy. Every aspect of curling is covered in the Ed Lukowicz Curling Tips video. Order yours now. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-387-8034. Or send $39.95 plus $4 shipping to Curling Tips, Post Office Box 8281, Station F, Calgary, Alberta. T2J 2V4. Visa, MasterCard, and American Express welcome. Toronto, call 449-8888. Update for you, the game between Manitoba Quebec, final stone, Agnes Charette, uh, Buckingham, Quebec. Look at all the red stones, one top four, one back four, trying to just cut them down. Can she get far enough? No, she won't. So Manitoba picked up a steal of one, and they now lead eight to four. Chris Moore from Winnipeg. The game between Team Canada and Newfoundland, final stone, Laura Phillips, St. John's Curling Club, red stone, back four, one top four, in lots of trouble, this rink from Newfoundland gets a steal of two for the defending champions, Heather Houston. And so as they play the 10, it is now 7-4, Canada leading. Ninth end action, British Columbia, Saskatchewan with BC leading 7-4. And a couple of corner guards in play. Julie Sutton. The BC second and her first stone. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. <laughs> I think are, things are switching faster than we can keep track. There's games that look like they were going one way and now have totally switched back to the teams near the top of the standing. Except for Saskatchewan. So Michelle's going to put up one more corner guard on the other side. She'll do this a couple of times probably then duck in behind the one she's already got there. That was a good shot by Pat Sanders. Uh, Linda, you know, it was a shot you had to make. The first one really set it up too. She half buried. That means Saskatchewan can't get a roll where they I'm want down. behind the guard. Scott, Lori. Lori Keller puts up the guard on the other side.
playing this outside one, Vic, instead of the, the one that's closer to the center line is, first of all, she can hit this one and roll the shooter into the rings, and also, uh, that zone's in an area where they are able to, if they do get a chance to go around it, really bury it, and sink it behind it, because there's so much movement as you go into that area. Look at this roll. By rolling over here now, you take away that come around. Just in case our viewers were wondering, you know, why she was playing the wide one as opposed to the one that was the closer to the center. That's an exactly why. A perfect roll by Julie Sutton. Kind of ugly. Now they have more stuff to bury around. No, I don't think so, Julie. You couldn't get them both off. I came way in and tossed it. It absolutely is a perfect roll as far as yeah, I'm concerned, Linda. I might not have rolled it quite so far, and then you have the draw protected a little better, but it's still a good shot. You have to come around two rocks, as you say. Not an easy spot to do that. Take it back eight, Stop, and just fight the back of the 12. An update for you, the game between Ontario and Nova Scotia as they play the ninth. Ontario leading 5-4, this final stone, Jill Greenwood, Humber Highland. With the brakes on somewhere. It'll slip right through, can you believe it? A steal of two for Colleen Jones, and now Nova Scotia leads 6-5 as they play the 10th. What a day. Well, Lindy, this is interesting. This is one of those times where I might go up and run the front ones off. I definitely agree. They're up so many points so late in the game. I think I would have done it the last inning, so I definitely would be doing it now. Georgina Hawks. It, but it's a great one. I think she's she just playing the come around. Ray, update for you. Manitoba, Quebec. 8-4, final stone. Agnes Charette, Buckingham, Quebec. This game isn't over yet. Look at this. One, two, three for Quebec in the ninth. And so they'll go to the tenth. Manitoba, Chris Moore leading 8-7. And Manitoba will have the hammer coming home. Getting back to that raise, I think that turned out very well for them. I thought they were playing the draw. They were playing the draw. They were absolutely were playing. Good raise if you look at it there. <laughs> Georgina Hawks. all over the game between Alberta PEI uh, Alberta Debbie okay. Shermack from the Shamrock Thanks Club in Edmonton a 9-4 winner over Prince Edward Island and Kathy Gallant from Charlottetown so Alberta is now five and five Prince Edward Island drops to three and seven Joan Stricker around 
that center line guard, the one just to the left of center line. They're hoping to set it in front of this red stone. Not a bad shot. Is so it throw too deep? <laughs> it did expose the red stone a little bit on the outside. I'm not sure who was second shot here. There. Low normal. Talking about the double. Well, come, you throw these a little in. <laughs> <laughs> come. George has figured out everybody's relief here. Well, here's a good look. The Saskatchewan Stone on the button. They shot Stone or on the four foot part, me. Back four. Seven four, British Columbia leading yeah, Saskatchewan. Michelle Schneider. You can see uh, she put the stopwatch on it just as she released it. Uh, Whoa, wait, wait only. Just checking the weight. Yep. No, 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 all the way. No, no, right off. It's a good shot. I don't think she wanted to tap it quite as far, but it's still sitting in front of the other red stone. And they're shaking hands in the game between the defending champions, Heather Houston and Newfoundland. It winds up a 7-4 final. So Heather Houston, Lakehead Ladies Curling Club, is now 7-3, Newfoundland 1-9. Here's a scenario for you. If Heather Houston I'm wins her last game, she will finish in first place, regardless of what Manitoba does. That's if Saskatchewan loses. Yeah, but I think it'll still be shot even if it comes on this one. The only thing it could do is tap it here. Well, okay. I think Pat's right. There's short of anything. She said, if, if I just sit on top of it, uh, you know, freeze on the face of it or come down in front of it, then she's got a very difficult shot to get her two points. Georgie was talking about trying to get it out of there, but I don't see any advantage to that at all. Over on top. Pat Sanders, final stone here in the ninth. 
Saskatchewan does have the hammer. Shot Rock, top four, belongs to BC. You can't quite see the guard, but it is covering that shot red stone. Not sure if she could get a inter rock in there for two by removing that red stone. Could she catch a corner maybe and push it out to the side, to the left? Problem, I guess, would be trying yeah, to hold the shooter, the maybe, if you hit it that thinly. He it would be that we're difficult. Not get shot, and we can't. We just off know if we okay, if, if we bang here. Just off know. Just, oh, just, just off, off know, off know, and just catch. What are that stone? That's this, right. And off this back. No, see, even if we catch a piece of this one, it's gonna roll. Hit that one and roll in front. Right. That's right. If we can catch a piece of that. different angle well, there'd be a yeah, chance of removing all three red stones so if they could hit the red onto the yellow right? but okay. I don't think the angle's quite right. You think so? Well maybe not. Boy. Maybe not. We might be close. See if if we just if we yeah, if we hit that one there, then that should come here and hit this one. Okay, they're talking about coming down, hitting this stone right here, hitting this here, driving it back onto this one here. That rock will go this way. Okay. This stone will hit into this one here and maybe squeeze over a little towards this stone here. <laughs> you got that, Vic? Oh. But mm -hmm. well, there's a possibility they could leave. Could they uh, Could they pick up three here? I mean, is that the kind no, of shot? No, I don't think so. Do you just try right. and pick okay. up your two? If the yellow rock was slightly over, a little bit closer to center, it might be there. Getting two is difficult enough here. Yeah. Especially if, when it curls so quickly, it's going to be hard to hit the outside of the stone. The nose will do it. That yellow one is not going anywhere. Yeah. She's right. The yellow, the yellow, one, the yellow stone is yeah. not going to go anywhere. You just hit it right on the nose. She trails by three. Ninth in. Final stone. Saskatchewan skip Michelle Schneider. Looking to pick up at least two. So a little bit more weight than she normally does. But she's close to the nose. One. the one at the top that they're looking right now and the red stone at the back of the four which one is second shot i think she may have got two it's very close yep. two yellow two yellow two is yellow. right that's what she wanted Boy, that's oh what a great shot by michelle schneider as she picked up two here in the ninth and now she trails by just one it's seven six and the thrilling 10th end still the cup don't go away we'll be back to Kelowna in just a minute Remember when movies were 50 cents, hamburgers a quarter, and you could put a nickel in the jute box and listen to this? Atlantis Direct Marketing presents Jute Box Jive, one of the greatest treasuries of rock and roll memories ever put on two albums. Remember Danny and the Juniors. Jute Box Jive, a fabulous two-record collector set with every original song performed by the original artist and exclusively compiled for this special TV offer. Remember Roy Orbison. Only the lonely. Johnny Maestro and the Crest. The one and only Little Richard. 
This deluxe two-record treasury is an exclusive TV offer and is not available anywhere else at any price. Remember when the top ten included these songs? Jukebox Jive does. Yes, this fabulous collection is like having your own jukebox in your own home. Order your copy of this exclusive two-record set now and have the greatest jukebox jive hits of rock and roll for your own. Call now. Here's how to order yours. COD and credit card customers call 1-800-543-1013. That's 1-800-543-1013. Or rush 1695 for LPs or cassettes, 1895 for compact discs, plus $3 shipping and handling to Jukebox Jive, P.O. Box 600, Station R, Toronto, Ontario, M4G 4E1. COD and credit card customers call 1-800-543-1013. Friday, roll into the weekend with TSN. Two-wheel speedsters battle time and distance in a 24-hour endurance race. Action that rides on the edge of the bowl door. The NASCAR circuit heads into a new year, and the inside track to the action is as close as your television. Highlights and features on Speed Week. Then the nation's best female curlers head toward a national championship. See exclusive semifinal action of the Scott Tournament of Hearts. Friday, the place to be is TSN. We're playing Lead Rocks in the 10th end, and Saskatchewan has cut the lead to one. It's 7-6 BC leading. However, BC and Pat Sanders will have last rock, Leanne Everly. <laughs> well, Linda, that, that was just a terrific shot by know Michelle this is just this, you know kind of uh, illustrates what we've been talking about of, you know, about her shooting ability you know she missed a couple of draws early in this game uh, in the middle end which she kind of fought draw weight but uh, that was a beautiful shot to get her two points the best she could do she hit it absolutely perfect and she, and she saw the angle she saw what that's she could right do. that's it was the well point. called I like that well this is Saligo makes the hit rolls over now just off the center line about a well, maybe a half foot in front of the rings Going to have some guards up. Well, they played a terrific game against Chris Moore, and they lost it in an extra end. And uh, when Chris stole a point, uh, Manitoba played a perfect end last night against her and, and stole a big single. But Laurie Keller. Michelle has to try and seal this game. She's one down coming home. She doesn't have last rock. She's throwing Stop up rock. those center rocks. An update for you on the game between Manitoba and Quebec. It's 8-7, Manitoba leading with the hammer. Final stone, Chris Moore. Fort Rouge Curling Club facing one stone at the back of the four. She'll rub out front and wreck. Agna Charette Buckingham steals one. They're going to an extra end. It's all tied, 8-8. Eight, eight. There's the spill. Julie Sutton with her first stone. This is turning out to be a great afternoon. Unbelievable. The back and forth games and a team like Quebec hanging in there with Manitoba and have the big game tonight against Saskatchewan. Second stone for Lori Keller. I want this in front. Too tight to that stone. The dub makes the double possible. Too bad the girls, the brushes didn't stay with it. Maybe they could have froze it right to the faces by being with that stone. It's one of the reasons why you, you know you never drop away from them. Julie Sutton. No 
of his path. If he can get the guards up, Michelle will have a good chance to get behind them. Jones come on in the last couple of ends, period for ends. She struggled also a little bit in the early part of the game, but she made a couple of great hits and goals coming this way earlier, so. Yeah, bring it up. Jones Three. Stricker. The Saskatchewan third in her first stone Three here high. in the 10th end. BC Three. leading by one. Three. It's Three. seven six. Three. Really good shots. That's in a good position. She said maybe a little more weight, but it's still about halfway between the hotline and the house. I agree. It's a good spot. Georgina Hawk. Joan Stricker and her second stone. This one out a little bit. The last night threw pretty good. This is a case of trying to move the guard around and finding a spot where they can't peel it off, but so far BC is doing very well. And we're down to Skip Stones here in the 10. Michelle Schneider trails by one. Another front stone. Pat Sanders, her first stone. It's a good shot. Not much to go around here. I mean here? Now the Georgie uh, made the big shot on this end and into that double and she got the, you know, they got an early nose hit and then uh, Regina Hawks uh, got them both, and that's kind of turned this situation right around. All Michelle could do now is try and bury one in behind that uh, long corner guard. And if she, if she makes the great shot, she'll leave the whole eight foot for Pat.
Michelle Schneider and her second stone, her last stone, here in the tent. And she sits and waits for Pat Stanton. Of course, she's got to be in the ring. She's got to keep it there. No, no. Saying that there's lots of room. They need to get a little corner yep, cover. Yep, 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 yep. Laurie Kelly and Everly draw back. Top eight foot in front of the T line. And okay. Now, Pat Stan. Good job, Michelle. Danny. The nice thing about this particular thing, it looks like they may lose this game, and uh, Pat Sanders' chances of this are not great, but uh, it happens, and I both know, but, but uh, the uh, Saskatchewan came on at the end of the game, I felt. I mean, I, they, they sort of got back to the way they were playing, and Joan made some good shots. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Whoa! So that'll... Whoa! And they're going to have a tough game tonight against Quebec, so they need to feel that confidence. Clean it! Clean it! Final clean stone. It, clean it! Clean it! Clean it! Clean it! Pat Sanders. That's the Pat Sanders we know. Takes the hit. The shooter will hang around, and it winds up an 8-6 win for British Columbia. And they remain alive. Their record is now 6-4. and four. Saskatchewan drops to 7-3. and three. Update the game between Ontario and Nova Scotia. This is the last stone for Nova Scotia. They lead 6-5 over Ontario. Colleen Jones and Jill Greenwood have been trading draws to the forefoot. Look at this one. Right in on top. What happens here, though, Vic, it, it drills too much and it leaves Ontario lying shot stone. Shot stone just biting the buck. Final stone for Jill Greenwood, Humber Highland, and hers is just a little too heavy. Well, she's got to draw to the button to win. If it curls a little bit and touches the front yellow stone, she could have got two to win. Unfortunately, she touches her own stone and leaves Nova Scotia shot. And it's a win for Colleen Jones. Seven to five, the final. So Colleen Jones from Halifax, now seven and three, Ontario, will wind up this Scott Tournament of Hearts with a record of four and seven. Just one more sheet in play, and it's an extra end. Manitoba, Quebec in an 8-8 eight, eight tie. Well, Agnes Shretch. Just played an outturn draw to a rock that sits in the corner of the forefoot and absolutely glued it on the face. It's not right up against it, but I think I think she shot rock. From our end, I thought it was closer than that, but now that we get a good look from our camera above the uh, the rings, you can see that that uh, actually Manitoba still remains shot. I thought uh, for a moment that she had glued it to the face of it, Linda, but Manitoba is shot. The one in behind is shot. So it looks like uh, Chris has maybe decided to draw to the other side didn't want to go after it I assume because she doesn't want to push it onto the redstone behind it and leave it shot rock looks like if she cornered it she'd be able to push it far enough and roll over and sit too but I think she's looking at a big comeback by Quebec and maybe not sure what she should do the bisonette <laughs> What to do here? Manitoba does have last stone. Chris Moore. They started off the week zero or one and three. One and three, pardon me. And they have come back on a tear. Winning six straight games. And this is a very important game for them. A win would put them at seven and three and tie them with Canada, Nova Scotia, and Saskatchewan. A loss would drop them into that four loss bunch. There's what they're looking at right there. Now she's lying shot rock. Chris Moore is lying one. Stone in the middle, the red stone in the middle. Scores tied, it's the extra end. I think they're worried about playing the draw they called first. If they don't put it in perfectly, they're allowing Quebec to come right down on top of it and make it difficult to shot for Chris with their last one. Or set up a double, or set up a hit and roll. Exactly. Things could go wrong with this one. The other possibility, of course, is coming down on the face of the Yellowstone.
but you can't afford to touch it. Freeze on the face of it, stopping just stop short of it. Or, or just guard the situation too. The danger with this is if you if you don't uh, make it properly, you leave it the hit and roll across or the double. Well, the decision has been made for the first stone from the Manitoba skip. This is Chris Moore. Former world champion in 1984. Okay, she's going to come around. The guard is out here. Come around and try and sit right in this area right here. You've got to get it tucked, so... Take that stone and move it forward, Vic, to the top of the forefoot. It's a good shot, but now it allows Agnes to come down and sit right on top of it. Force Chris to draw to the button for the win. Guilain de Chatelet, that is the lady with the brush, the Quebec third. The skip is Agnes Charette. The 46-year-old has been a two-time Quebec champion. In 82 and 84, this is her third trip to a Scott Tournament of Hearts. With Chris missing the draw on the 10th, I'm wondering if she wanted to find out exactly what draw weight was in case she has a critical shot with her last one. She has got to be shot stone with this, uh, with this draw. The win here keeps her in contention, you know, Vic. Certainly would, because she would be in that group with four losses, and then depending what happens in the 15th and final round tonight. Got the line. She's got the line. And got to be shot. Stone, though, got to be shot. And she is. She has a piece of the button. Did she tapped that stone too far. No, it's pretty, you know, as good as she can do, really, Linda. It's she probably didn't want to tap it back too, too far, far, but, but uh, if Chris comes to the face of it, no matter what her weight is, she's going to have shot rock. She's just playing a draw. She didn't take long to decide either. Final stone for Manitoba skipper Chris Moore. A win would put her in that group at seven and three. This is the time in the curling game that I was always glad I was the lead. <laughs> <laughs> All my responsibility was to make sure I didn't to blow the sweeping. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, is a huge part of the game, because once it leaves the thrower's hand, once it leaves Chris's hand here, it belongs to, you know, the, the, the brushers. It's about a duplication of her first shot. It belongs to Lori and Kristen now. The front end. The lead is Kristen Curla. Lori Zeller is on the left. They haven't put a brush to it. Here it comes now. A pop for a little slip. Will it slip, maybe? Will it slip? No, it'll hang around, and it'll be the win and a deep sigh of relief for Chris Moore. And she, with the win, goes to 7-3. and three. And now there are four rinks at that magic number of 7-3, and three, and they'll sort themselves out tonight. We'll have more from Kelowna when we come back. Got your cold. I made some chicken soup. Thank you. Scotty. So soft, they're softer than a kiss. Hi, honey. Daddy, meet your grandson. We named him after you. Scotty. So soft, they're softer than a kiss. 
Lifestyle into a whole new lifestyle with the McCain menu plan and light to light dinners. Delicious meals at less than 300 calories each. Gonna walk some more. Yeah. Gonna laugh some more. Gonna eat a whole new lifestyle. McCain Light to Light, a whole new lifestyle. Now it's time for the TSN Turning Point brought to you by Vita, right? Well, Saskatchewan struggled early in the day, but they finally got themselves in position. Here's Pat Sanders taking a very quiet hit and stick, rolling over, score her one point in that very crucial eighth bet. A cash donation will be made to Amateur Sport on behalf of TSN and Mita. At Mita, all they make are great copiers and long distance copiers. Here are the standings after 14 rounds, and the win by Manitoba puts them at eight and three, and they are finished. So now they will wait to see what happens in the 15th round. Team Canada, Nova Scotia, Saskatchewan at 7-3. and three. But look who's waiting. Should any of those falter, we could have playoffs. British Columbia, 6-4. and four, New Brunswick, 6-4. and four. Then the others will try and play spoiler. Alberta, Quebec, Ontario, and on to the bottom, Newfoundland at 1-9. Our game in the 15th round will feature the defending champions. It will be Heather Houston and Team Canada going against Alberta and Debbie Shermack from the Shamrock Club in Edmonton. 9 p.m. Eastern Time. 6 p.m. Pacific. I hope you'll join us here from the 1989 Scott Turning of Hearts. It's all brought to you by Scott Paper. We build our reputation around the house. On behalf of Linda Moore, Ray Turnbull, and our entire crew, I'm Vic Rutter. Be sure to join us 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. It is Team Canada, Alberta, the final draw from the 1989 Scott Turning of Hearts.